Good afternoon. My name is Lynn Blanchard and we're delighted to have you here. I have the honor of serving as the director of the Carolina Center for Public Service. And the center has the honor of hosting the university's annual public service awards event. So I'd like to welcome you to the 21st annual public service awards celebration. Not to state the obvious, but this is different from anyone we've ever done before. We're all getting used to these more virtual connections. And one advantage today is we're able to have a number of folks join us from afar who would not be able to attend an in-person event. We're gathering at a time of difficulty and challenge for the university and our world. I hope you'll be inspired today by the community-engaged work exemplified by today's award recipients. It's easy to get discouraged in difficult times like these, which makes it even more important that we have time like this of coming together to celebrate some of the very best in public service, engagement, and engaged scholarship at Carolina. As we celebrate these outstanding students, faculty, and staff who are being honored today, we also want to recognize that each of you in the audience has in some way had an impact on this work. Whether you're a community partner, donor, public official, faculty or staff member, administrator, student, or friend or family of one of the awardees, the Carolina Center for Public Service wants to acknowledge you and your support of these efforts. We're particularly pleased today to have Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz with us to kick off the awards. His presence is a testament to the importance of he places on public service and engagement at Carolina and it demonstrates his commitment to recognizing and honoring that service mindset. He was appointed chancellor in December of 2019 after serving as interim chancellor. And as most of you know, he is a renowned neuroscientist, researcher, and academic leader. It's particularly appropriate for him to be here today to celebrate public service and engagement as he himself has a long career in research that benefits the public. A member of Carolina's faculty since 1995, Chancellor Guskowitz's innovative work on diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of sports-related concussions has led to safety improvements in high school sports and the identification and treatment of serious head injuries. His research has also influenced concussion guidelines and recommendations made by the NCAA and the NFL. Prior to his current role, Chancellor Guskowitz served as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. It's my pleasure to welcome Chancellor Kevin Guskowitz. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, it's great to be here with all of you. Can you hear me okay, Lynn? Good. Okay. I, I wish we could be here celebrating uh, in person, uh, but so glad that we found a way to honor the service of our award winners. Uh, I'm looking out over the old well from my uh, office building here in South uh, building and it's uh, uh, beautiful, sun shining, a lot of flowers in bloom and trees in full bloom. Uh, but sadly, it, the campus feels uh, lonely, uh, as uh, as you can imagine. Uh, we have had some uh, students today uh, stopping by in their Carolina blue caps and gowns to take uh, photos. But um, I wish we were back uh, functioning uh, as a, as a, under normal campus operations. But uh, we will uh, recover and and uh, be back in due time. I, um, uh, I want to add that, as Lynn has already indicated, public service is a key part of our mission at Carolina, is central to who we are uh, as a university. Uh, we are not, uh, as I have said repeatedly, uh, just the University of North Carolina. We are the university for North Carolina. Uh, it's our job, it's our responsibility to ensure that our teaching, research, uh, and service benefits our state uh, first, and, and, and then the nation and the world. And there are many ways in which we show uh, case the way in which we do this. Thinking back uh, to this past uh, October uh, with the Tar Hill bus tour, uh, we got a chance uh, to see firsthand how our students, our faculty and staff are making an impact across North Carolina. We learned about the, uh, the towns and communities that our students call home and to see how we can have even a greater impact here on campus. Uh, in providing service back to the state of North Carolina. Our service uh, to the state is more important now uh, than ever, I would say, with uh, the pandemic that we're faced with. I've seen that service uh, at our BEAM makerspace, uh, where 
uh, medical students came in to work with our staff there to make uh, face shields over the past several weeks for our healthcare workers here at UNC hospitals and, and other hospitals around the state of North Carolina. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak uh, with uh, faculty staff uh, at the School of Government earlier this week and thank them for providing critical resources to help local uh, officials, local government officials respond to the pandemic. And students are stepping in asking how they can volunteer both at the hospital as well as uh, keeping the food shelter going uh, here on campus in some way during this critical time when many people are in need uh, of food. Uh, and we see it uh, here uh, with our award winners today and uh, uh, from improving mental health services to developing inclusive history uh, workshops to raising uh, funds for cancer research. Your dedication uh, makes uh, our university, our state, and our world a better place. And I just want to thank you for uh, living out Carolina's mission uh, of service. Uh, thank you to the Carolina uh, Center for Public Service uh, for organizing this virtual ceremony. And uh, I want to now, uh, I just want to congratulate all of you and uh, thank me, uh, thank you for allowing me to uh, say a few things. And I want to pass it back to Lynn now. Thank you, Chancellor Guskowitz. We appreciate the opportunity to host this event for the university, and we're grateful to all of those who make it possible. As we begin, I want to first thank the team that organized this event and is currently working behind the scenes to ensure that everything runs smoothly. All year long, they had put thought, energy, and effort into connecting Carolina and communities, and in the last few weeks, things have been completely redesigned for this event to make it possible for to present these awards virtually. Now let's turn to the reason that we're all here, the 2020 Public Service Awards at UNC Chapel Hill. The first awards to be presented today are the Robert E. Bryan Public Service Awards. These awards were established in 1999 to recognize individual students, staff, and faculty for exemplary public service efforts. The award honors alumnus Robert E. Bryan a native of Newton Grove, North Carolina, whose portrait, and I'm going to share it with you, is here at the center. So he's looking over us today. Uh, Mr. Bryan worked his way through Carolina by selling oranges and newspapers. And after his 1926 graduation, he went on to live in Goldsboro, where he continued to exemplify public service throughout his life, serving in elected, appointed, and voluntary positions at the local, county, and state level. We're honored that his daughter, a founder of the center and key supporter, is on the call with us. Thank you, Marjorie, for joining us today and helping us celebrate your father's legacy. This year's recipients of the Robert E. Bryan Award carry on the proud tradition of the nation's first public university. The Undergraduate Student Award goes to Joseph, Jonah M., a, a sophomore biology major and chemistry minor in the College of Arts and Sciences. Jonah is receiving the Robert E. Bryan Public Service Award for his work in founding the Robert E. In, in founding the UNC Cancer Med Society. Launched in the fall of 2019, it connects undergraduate students with cancer-related activities such as fundraising and community education. Dr. Albert Baldwin, who nominated Jonah, says of him, Jonah is extremely well organized and a natural leader who is highly motivated toward a career in cancer research and clinical care, which was inspired by his mother's long struggle with colorectal cancer. The impact of the Cancer Med Society is surprisingly broad, impacting around 120 students at multiple levels. Please join me in congratulating Jonah M. And Jonah, please join us on camera. Thank you for that introduction, Ms. Blankard. Uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonah M. Uh, I'm the president and founder of the Cancer Med Society. I would like to start by thanking the Robert E. Bryan Award Committee for acknowledging the continued effort of the Cancer Med Society to improve the lives of those impacted by cancer in North Carolina. Um, Dr. Albert Baldwin, who is an associate director at Lineberger, as well as our committed advisor, for nominating me for such a prestigious award and for his unwavering support since our group's beginning. And of course, my friends, family, and colleagues who have supported our organization through their encouragement, hard work, and commitment 
to improve undergraduate involvement in the local cancer community. I remember how about this time last year, uh, just after getting the paperwork approved for our group, I was in my dorm room contacting local hospitals, laboratories, nonprofits, anywhere I can find cancer related opportunities for our growing seven person listserv. Um, and how nervous but excited I was for our first semester as an organization. Since growing to the 120 members that we have today, our four partner philanthropic organizations and the many ongoing projects we have to develop financial and support programs for local families, have I realized how blessed I am to have such a committed and passionate team who has supported our mission every step along the way. This truly would have not been possible without each and every one of them. I'm very optimistic about the future of the Cancer Med Society and more confident than ever that our organization will continue to support North Carolina families for years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Jonah. Colin LaProd, a third year student in the UNC School of Dentistry, receives the Graduate Student Award for his work with the Vita de Esperanza Clinic. Through the Vita de Esperanza Clinic, which offers, three, offers free patient-centered care and prevention for underserved patients. Colin has been a leader in addressing oral health disparities in Latinx communities. I want to share with you a quick note from Colin's nominators. Colin LaProd has been an outstanding clinic coordinator, mentor, and friend while volunteering at the Vitas de Esperanza Healthcare Clinic in Siler City. He continues to use his knowledge and skills to improve and streamline the patient care process at the free clinic run by UNC healthcare students, faculty, and community volunteer. Please join me in congratulating Colin LaProd. Colin, will you join us on camera? Hey everyone, um, hope everyone is doing well. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the Carolina Center for Public Service for this award. Uh, I graduated from UNC in 2014 as an undergraduate public service scholar, so this means a great deal. Uh, the Vitas Esperanza Dental Clinic was opened in 2017 to provide dental treatment to underserved patients in Siler City uh, with a focus on service to the Latinx community. Uh, the clinic, which is one of six free clinics now operated by the dental school, is held on five Saturdays during the fall and spring semesters with an additional two dates held during the summer. Um, it doesn't look like we'll be holding those this summer. We look forward to getting back to work soon, of course. Um, the site also houses a medical clinic, giving providers the opportunity to provide interprofessional care in an environment that fosters collaboration between the university's schools of medicine, nursing, pharmacy, and dentistry. Uh, the Vetus organization continues to overcome geographic, socioeconomic, and linguistic barriers to provide care to one of our state's underserved communities, service to which has been an important purpose of the School of Dentistry since it was founded in 1950. Uh, it's been an incredible opportunity to be so involved in this project. Uh, after only treating a few patients in the early days, we now see around 15 to 20 at each clinic, uh, with an additional 8 to 10 being screened and look forward to continued growth. Uh, the list of students and faculty that I'd like to thank is a little too long to read off this afternoon, uh, but I'd like to mention Dr. John Kaiser of the School of Medicine and Ascari Arias of the Vita Esperanza organization. Uh, our work wouldn't be possible without their support. And I would again like to express my gratitude to the CCPS for arranging this event and uh, for the recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Uh, Buckley Public Service Scholar, that's great to know. We're excited to have two outstanding staff members receiving Bryan Awards today. The first of those goes to Dylan Russell. Dylan is recognized for his work as Executive Director of Lead for North Carolina at the UNC School of Government. Dean of the School of Government, Mike Smith, summed up his accomplishments in helping found the organization. Dylan Russell has been essential in ensuring the following accomplishments in a single year. Fundraised more than $1 million for this initiative, recruited 16 bright, talented, service-minded young people to work in local government, recruited 16 local governments with considerable financial need that could also provide a rewarding learning environment established an evaluation methodology to help us track our accomplishment and turned around to start year two of recruitment, fundraising, and evaluation. Congratulations to Dylan Russell. Dylan? 
Yeah, thank you so much for this honor. And thank you most importantly to the school government and my colleagues and mentors there, especially Jen Willis, Kara Malanzi, and Dean Mike Smith. So when Albert Coates founded the Institute of Government, he said every year our colleges were graduating thousands of students that could read a page of foreign text, but couldn't read their own municipal balance sheet. They could track Caesar and Cicero's travels around Rome, yet couldn't navigate City Hall. That was in 1944 and flash forward to 2020 and not much has changed. 70% of local government leaders in North Carolina are eligible to retire and young college graduates desperately seek careers in which they can build community and not just exist within it. Lead for North Carolina sits at the nexus of those two worlds, what our institutions need and what our young people want, careers in local government in which they can make a meaningful impact. Our program is helping re-envision rural communities across the state. As our inaugural cohort wraps up their first year of service, our fellows have secured hundreds of thousands of dollars in private grants, rebuilt communities after Florence, and now are helping governments respond and keep residents safe in light of COVID-19. This program delivers the UNC brand to struggling and economically distressed communities across the state. Both rural and urban communities share the future of North Carolina's growth and prosperity. That shared future is what drives young people to our fellowship program and what drives local governments to welcoming their ideas and perspectives. Upon graduation, Bill Friday would ask graduates, a million poor North Carolinians pay taxes to subsidize your education. What are you gonna to do to pay them back? Lead for North Carolina exists to help graduates answer his call. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dylan. The second staff recipient of the Robert E. Bryan Public Service Award is Christy Norris, Director of Carolina K-12 in Carolina Public Humanities. Christy is receiving this award for her development and implementation of the Teaching Hard History Initiative that trains educators across the state on complicated topics of identity, race, racism, and white advantage. One teacher who attended the workshop explained what made it so meaningful. This is the most valuable workshop that I have ever attended. I enjoyed hearing from professional historians and other educational leaders. I feel like a lot of professional development is meaningless or meant to sell you something or some product or program. This was enriching, motivating, and empowering. Please join me in congratulating Christy Norris. Christy? Thank you. Thank you to the Carolina Center for Public Service, to the Robert E. Bryan Award Committee, and of course the Bryan family um, for recognizing this work. Carolina K-12 supports and serves teachers and each of North Carolina's 100 counties. And I genuinely feel like this is not just an acknowledgement of our work, but of the importance of K-12 teachers. And I'm so appreciative for that. The Teaching Hard History Initiative has been incredible to implement in this specific historical moment when everything seems so political and divisive. It's really not surprising that many teachers choose to avoid hard history or anything that's controversial at all. So by providing educators with the content and pedagogy and skills to do this work effectively, I hope we can really move the needle on the way that we teach about the past and the present. And I think it's really important for me to say that this work would not be possible without the incredible folks in the College of Arts and Sciences the leadership team, such as Dean Cherry Rhodes and Senior Associate Dean Elizabeth Engelhart, as well as our former Dean, Chancellor Guskowitz. Um, these folks have come to our board meetings at Carolina Public Humanities. They've shown up to greet our teachers and express appreciation to them, despite insanely busy schedules. And the same is really true of our incredible advisory board at Carolina Public Humanities. We are so lucky to have the support of these incredible um, volunteers and we have exceptional partners from the North Carolina Society to the Museum of History and so many others. I do have the absolute best colleagues ever. Um, our leaders Lloyd Kramer and Matt Zor are literally teacher cheerleaders and they understand that when our public schools thrive and our teachers thrive we all can thrive. And lastly on that note I'll just say you know, Carolina has been supporting teachers in these essential ways for years, um, but it's taken a pandemic for teachers to go from being overlooked and underappreciated universally to now finally being recognized as some of the most important players who keep our world functioning. 
And so I'm very proud that Carolina has valued this type of public service and public outreach. And I look forward to continued work with teachers all around the state. So thank you so much. Thank you, Christy. Meg Zomorodi, Assistant Provost for Interprofessional Education and Practice and Professor in the UNC School of Nursing, is receiving the Robert E. Bryan Public Service Faculty Award for her direction of the Rural Interprofessional Health Initiative. The Rural Interprofessional Health Initiative uses a partnership model to address workforce gaps and health outcomes in rural counties in North Carolina by placing interprofessional students in those counties to work on high impact projects. Her nominator, Dental School Dean Scott DeRossi said, it is not enough to say that Dr. Meg Zomorodi has been a change agent in the field of nursing, engaged teaching, engaged research and service to the community. Dr. Zomorodi has been a change agent across the whole spectrum of healthcare, from pharmacy to social work to dentistry. Please join me in congratulating Meg Zomorodi. Meg? Hi everyone, thank you so much for the honor of receiving the Robert E. Bryan Faculty Service Award. For those of you who know my story, you know that my passion comes to serve comes from a long time ago encounter with then Chancellor Michael Hooker. I was a freshman undergraduate at UNC at the time and that brief encounter changed my personal viewpoint on service. For those who don't know that story, when we can once again meet face to face, let's connect and I'll tell it to you. When I received the award announcement from Dr. Blanchard, it could not come, have, have come at a better time. I was feeling a bit low, and this recognition has lifted me up in so many ways. So a sincere thank you to Dean DeRossi for taking the time to nominate me and to all those who took the time to nominate others. It really means a lot. We began the Rural Interprofessional Health Initiative in 2017 when Dr. Julie Byerly told me that she had an idea for how to move interprofessional education forward at UNC while also advancing rural health. It was a win-win, she said, and then she introduced me to Dr. Robert Bashford and Meredith Bazemore. That's my rural dream team. You see a picture of me and Dr. Bashford here because one, I don't have many pictures of me in action, which was asked, but I also wanted to honor him. He passed away on New Year's Eve of this year. I took this picture as I was walking to get him a banana bread from Starbucks while he was in the hospital. For those that knew him, he was everywhere. I texted him, that I couldn't even get away from him while he was confined to a hospital bed. And if he were here today, he would be the person doing the Zoom bombing right now. The timing of Rippy helped us to successfully build relationships that are so important to the Office of Interprofessional Education and Practice, of which I serve. And Dr. Byerly was right. The timing was perfect because Provost Bluen became provost and said it was time we had an office for IPE. So a special thank you to him and Dean Paragalo Montano for believing in me and my team. In closing, I'd like to recognize that these are unprecedented times. I'd like to take, thank the students, faculty, and our IPEP network who have helped us build the Carolina COVID Student Services Corps. It's an amazing group of health professional students who are volunteering their time to serve North Carolina. It's amazing to watch them and they remind us that we are better together. Thank you, Meg. The, the finally, the Robert E. Bryan Public Service Student Organization Award goes to the Veterans Advocacy Legal Organization in the UNC School of Law. The Veterans Le Advocacy Legal Organization, or VALOR, is recognized for its spring break pro bono trips. Members of this organization spend time over spring break to gather in legal information that they can use to help upgrade the VA benefits of homeless service members who have PTSD and other service-related health injuries and disabilities. Nominator Allison Standard Comfort had this to say, when the students of Valor assist these forgotten and discarded heroes with upgrading their discharges and accessing VA health care and mental health services, they are not sim simply lending a hand to a former soldier, sailor, or airman. They are giving a life-changing intervention. Congratulations to the Veterans Advocacy Legal Organization. Isabel Stevens, president of the organization, is accepting the award on their behalf. Isabel? Hi, first and foremost, I just want to thank the Carolina Center for um, Public Service for considering us for this award and um, the Robert E. Bryan uh, Committee 
and the family for giving this award to us. Um, I am honored and humbled to be able to accept the Public Service Award on behalf of Valor. Um, Valor is near and dear to my heart, not just because of the amazing public service that we do in which students will give up three days of their spring break to go and hope these, help these homeless veterans who are very underrepresented and um, stigmatized. Um, and we also create an amazing community at the law school. So with that, I wanted to also thank um, Todd Levin, who is our supervising attorney and welcomes us up to Asheville every year to help him with this work. I wanted to thank um, Professor John Brooker at the UNC School of Law for being our faculty advisor. And I wanted to thank UNC School of Law, um, particularly Dean Brinkley, for their unwavering support of Valor and of our community. So thank you. Thank you, Isabel. So I hope everybody will join me in congratulating all of this year's Bryan Award winners. Next, we'll be presenting the Office of the Provost Engaged Scholarship Awards. In 2000, Provost Dick Richardson established the Office of the Provost Awards to recognize extraordinary public service and engaged scholarship at the university. These awards are given for engaged teaching, engaged research, and engaged partnerships. For us, excellence in community engaged scholarship includes considerations like responsiveness to community concerns and strong, mutually beneficial community partnerships. Importantly, these awards recognize that at Carolina, public service is not something that stands alone. It is integrally connected to learning and research and issues of importance to community. Receiving the Engaged Teaching Award is Maya Berry, Assistant Professor in the Department of African, African American, and Diaspora Studies. Maya? is such an incredible honor. Um, I believe that engaged teaching is best realized through collaboration. Um, so I don't accept this award as an individual, but as a member of a feminist collective um, of grad students. Um, when, when we were grad students, that really grew to support each other um, around questions of um, race and sexual violence during field work. Um, they are now dispersed throughout the country, um, but we still gather and work together um, to put forth a kind of pedagogy that their names, Shania Cordes, Claudia Chavez, Sarah Ehmud, and Elizabeth Velasquez Estrada, um, I also believe that this award represents the way that I've been embraced so immediately since my arrival at UNC. And so this um, award is also an acknowledgement of the community um, that I have here, that I'm grateful to have here, um, particularly Sarah Smith in the Department of Geography, Eunice Saleh, my chair in African, African American and Diaspora Studies, um, and uh, good comrades and friends in the race difference and power concentration in the anthropology department. Um, center and the type of view necessarily goes beyond disciplinary boundaries um, and is, is nourished by the kind of community that um, I have here at UNC, um, without which um, this would not be possible. And I'm thankful to be able to continue to grow as a scholar and as a professor um, to be the teacher that I know so many young women need um, when they are coming to higher education. Um, so thank you for this recognition on behalf of this community of feminists right now and to come. Thank you, Maya. I want to share a little bit more about Maya's award. She's being recognized for leading the Fugitive Anthropology Workshop Series on Race, Gender, Violence, and the Politics of Research. Her colleague, Sarah Smith, said this in her nomination. In 2017, Maya and her collaborators wrote a public and academic-facing article about the violence that women of color sometimes face when they do field work and the ways that they are not prepared or trained for it. I personally know students who have said that her writing on her own difficult experience in fieldwork has given them strength 
and new skills to manage their own research and field work. Congratulations again, Maya. This year, the Office of the Provost is giving two awards for engaged research. Deborah Jones, professor in the Department of Psychology and Neuroscience, is one of those recipients. Deborah was nominated by department chair Donna Lyles, who said, her recent applied research has the commendable goals of increasing the likelihood that all families, including our most vulnerable, have the opportunity to benefit from state of the field, evidence-based mental health services, and her federally funded research projects have the added benefit of offering free state of the field services to children and families in our Carolina community. Her program called Tantrum Tamers is in the UNC clinical psychology program. Tantrum tamer, Tamers trades graduate students to provide free evidence-based mental health care to families of young children with behavioral disorders to help them overcome barriers to mental health care. Congratulations, Deborah, for your exemplary engaged scholarship. Hi there. Um, full disclosure, I am actually in our clinic right now. I was a little bit worried my Wi-Fi wouldn't work at home. Um, thank you for that, um, to the Carolina Center for Public Service and the Office of the Provost for this award, particularly during this really, really difficult time where I know everyone's stressed and busy. I'm really grateful to my chair, Don Lyle, as well as his executive assistant, Hampton Foote, for nominating me. And I have to admit, I really find incredible meaning in this work that I am doing, both in terms of being able to provide free evidence-based mental health care to families in our community, um, as well as to engage lots of graduate students um, in those services who are serving as therapists, uh, as well as assessors and then undergraduates as well. So it's been really meaningful. Um, I am not the only one working in the clinic. There are lots of um, faculty in the Department of Psychology and in the clinical program in particular who are also providing free and sliding scale evidence-based mental health care. Um, and I could not do what I do without those colleagues as well as our staff and graduate students. So thanks to the college and to our department for supporting our clinic. We couldn't do the work without it. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. The other Office of the Provost Award for Engaged Research goes to co-principal investigators of the Me Photos Project, Sarah Betsy Bledsoe and Catherine Kate Lamasters. Me Photos is an acronym that stands for Mothers Informing Pregnancy and Postpartum Health Outcomes Through Story Sharing. This project has developed partnerships in the Robeson County area to address health and well being among rural mothers. The project seeks to fill gaps in research around health barriers and infant fatality rates. There are two recipients of this award, as interestingly, and I think of first, they nominated each other an example of true partnership and collaboration. Doctoral student Kate said this about Betsy, as a professor with years of community engaged experience, she has taught me in collaboration with our community partners, the importance of moving work forward at the speed of building relationships, the importance of substantively integrating community members into project planning, and the importance of truly listening before enacting a research agenda. And Betsy nominated Kate with these words. Ms. LeMasters has refused to define Robinson County by its deficits and insisted on actively partnering with mothers and their community to generate knowledge from their perspective and to work together to improve their health and well being. Congratulations, Betsy and Kate, on this award. We welcome you on camera. And maybe shall we let Betsy speak first? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much to the Carolina Center for Public Service and the award committee. Um, we are absolutely honored to have this project recognized in this way. I just want to say that this award goes not to myself, but to our community partners, the My Photos mothers, some of whom I hope have been able to make it today, who despite the busy lives that they lead as mothers who are often in school, working, or being full-time care providers for infants and toddlers have made time 
in their busy schedules to give of themselves to promote the health of other mothers in their community and families in their community. This award also goes to our community advisory board um, who have been dedicated to this project going on two years now and have been integral in guiding this project. These are members of the community who have full-time jobs working at agencies serving mothers and families in Robeson County, including Early Head, I'm sorry, Healthy Start, um, Nurse Family Partnership, the Robinson County Healthcare Corporation, and the Robinson County Health Department. So we are incredibly grateful to them, and I'd just like to take this time to honor the work that they do every day in Robinson County to promote the health and well-being of mothers and children and families. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I would just echo everything that Betsy said and also thank um, all of my supporters um, in this, including a countless list of peers and faculty mentors and community leaders. And it's been such an honor to do this work as a student and to learn how to do more um, equitable and engaged work moving forward um, as a public health professional. And um, like Betsy said, my photos is really, um, it was a photo voice project specifically, and is, it is an outgrowth of an ongoing partnership between representatives of community-based organizations, mothers and community leaders in Robinson County, and also um, at UNC. And we're really excited to see where this goes um, as we work towards hosting community forums and work towards ways to implement community-engaged interventions um, that support mothers in community that is by, led by the mothers in the community themselves. Thank you, Kate and Betsy, and congratulations again. The Office of the Provost Award for Engaged Partnership goes to Helene Frederick, Program Director and um, I believe Clinical Associate Professor in the School of Education and Program Director of the Human Development and Family Studies major in the School of Education. Helene is recognized for leading the development of an internship project for the school's largest undergraduate program. Students in the internship course work with schools and healthcare programs to produce meaningful deliverables for the community organizations they're placed with. Nominator Patricia Harris said, Dr. Frederick exemplifies an unyielding commitment to promoting the importance of collaboration and community. She continuously sets the standard for faculty striving to enact initiatives aimed to serve all students. Join me in congratulating Helene on this award. Helene, if you'll join us on camera. Hi everyone. First, thank you to the Carolina Center for Public Service and the Office of the Provost for this award and Trish for your nomination. I am grateful to serve in a school where our Dean and faculty colleagues value efforts to partner with institutions to help improve the lives of children and families. AJDFS will be graduating its third senior class this year, and I am proud to have been associated with placing over 100 students in various sites in the community, schools, and hospitals for this academic year. Our students complete over 350 hours in service to the community and other organizations. I'm also fortunate to lead these students who, even after we had to see face to face internships, they were innovative, creative, and maintained their sites, their site work remotely, and I'm so proud of them for that. Our students serve as supports at the hospitals in the NICU, PQ, the, chap the chaplain's office, helping with families as they grieve for loss of lives of their children, pediatric rehab, psychiatric services. They serve as doulas, fundraisers for Sacred Family House. Um, they engage in efforts to help combat implicit bias and inequities in schools and healthcare systems. They provide supports for refugee um, families, literacy programs, sex ed, substance abuse programs, and the list goes on and on. I'm also thankful to the many partners on campus and in the community who never waver at my persistent calls, emails, visits to help create a new partnership. I know sometimes um, they probably prefer that I did not call, but because of their support, we're able to give students that opportunity. And 
Lastly, thank you to the HJFS faculty who provide excellent support and mentorship to our students and also to me as I work to help serve Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Helene, and congratulations again. As we close out the presentation of the Office of the Provost Engaged Scholarship Awards, I'd like to invite Provost Bob Bluen, who's with us on the call, to share a few words. Bob Bluen became Carolina's 15th Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost in August of 2017, an acclaimed educator, award-winning researcher, and internationally recognized innovator. Bluen is a Bryson Distinguished Professor and was Dean of the UNC Eshelman School of Pharmacy from 2003 to 2017. Provost Bluen, we invite you to join us on camera. Thank you very much, Lynn. I'm so pleased to offer my congratulations to these Office of the Provost Award winners. I was very impressed when I read about your work and even more so now that I have had this opportunity to hear firsthand from you. Along with the Bryan Award winners, you exemplify what is best about Carolina, the commitment and dedication to engage teaching, research, and service that defines the great public university and speaks to who we are and who we serve. One of the key strategic initiatives of Carolina Next, Innovations for Public Good, is service to benefit society. There are no finer examples of this dedication to work that benefits society than the members of our Carolina community who we celebrate today. Thank you for what you do and for the example you set. And once again, congratulations. Lynn? Thank you, Provost Bluen, and congratulations. You all join me again in congratulating all of this year's Office of the Provost Award winners. This year, we are pleased to present the 16th annual Ned Brooks Award for Public Service. This award honors the contributions and values of Ned Brooks, who served the university for more than 30 years. In 2001, several hundred of Ned's closest friends and colleagues came together to create an endowment to provide an annual award to the individual who exemplifies Ned's leadership style through public service. Since then, others have contributed to honor Ned through contributions to this fund. This year's recipient of the Ned Brooks Award for Public Service is Carol Tresolini, recently retired Vice Provost for Academic Initiatives at UNC Chapel. Hill. She receives the award for a distinguished and sustained record of service to Carolina and the larger community. She was nominated by a number of directors of the centers, institutes, and programs that reported to her. As one stated, noted for her integrity, honesty, and compassion, Carol has played a central role in advancing community engagement at UNC. For example, she advocated for the development of the Carolina Latinx Center, relocated the American Indian Center into a home of its own, and initiated work aimed at creating the Carolina Asian American Center. She also revised center and institute policies to establish and maintain an oversight system for these units that was compatible with a community-based public service mission. Without her guidance, above and beyond the normal call of duty, many of our units might not have survived. Carol was a champion for our community engagement work. And in a note to Carol, upon learning she was receiving the, the award, Ned Brooks, who by the way is in our audience today, had this to say, congratulations, I'm absolutely delighted. I can't think of anyone more deserving. What you've done for the university is really amazing. I'm honored that you're being honored. You are one of the rare priceless gems. We congratulate Carol on receiving the 2020 Ned Brooks Award for Public Service. Carol, would you like to join us on camera? So thank you so much, Lynn. Um, I'm really just blown away by this. Um, Ned Brooks has been the standard bearer and the torch bearer, really, for public service and community engagement at UNC for decades. And he's been a role model for so many of us. It's such an honor for me to receive this award that honors him. 
I'm also just so grateful to have had the opportunity and the privilege of working with, supporting, and advocating for the incredibly dedicated and talented people who do the frontline work of connecting the university and its people and resources with the communities of the state and beyond. They work in multiple fields, whether in art, science, global affairs, community development, health, education, conservation, aging, or other fields. The work that they do ensures that Carolina never falters in achieving its public service mission. To my dear colleagues who nominated me for this award, thank you so much. It just means so much to me. Many thanks also to the Center for Public Service for its continuing excellent work as the linchpin for community engagement at Carolina. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Carol. I think everyone will agree that these award recipients continue Carolina's rich tradition of public service and engagement in an outstanding way. All of them will be receiving a framed certificate. We, we would present this were we in person, a framed certificate as well as a monetary award. And I will tell you that the check is in the mail. The individuals and efforts we've recognized today, <clears throat> along with many others across campus and throughout communities are wonderful examples of Carolina's roots in being of the public and for the public. As many noted, these accomplishments are all shared with others. Collaboration is a key element of their efforts, and we hope these awards honor all those involved in these outstanding projects. These examples of excellence will continue to inspire us all. Let's all keep working to make the world more empathetic and more responsive to the needs of others. As our partner, North Carolina Outward Bound, or Outward Bound, there's a saying, above all, compassion. Thank you all for being with us today and for all you do to serve others. Congratulations once again to the individuals and organizations honored today and thank you for joining us.